what is equine influenza mm. and what can we do to treat it? Okay, so another respiratory disease. This one's a little bit different than strangles um, in that it, uh, you don't have the problem of the long-term carriers. Okay. It's, and strangles was bacterial, influenza is, is viral. It's extremely contagious. Um, the horses that tend to get it are the, uh, the unvaccinated, mm -hmm. the, the young, like, like less than five years old, and horses that are um, understressed, maybe immunosuppressed, and that co-mingle and move around. So race tracks okay. would be a place. Young um, horses, show ground, stress, yeah. weaker immune system. I mean, that just screams race tracks. But, all, you know, showgrounds, um, so those, those are places you think of. Um, I'm trying to think what else she needs to know. She wants to know how to treat it. Yep. You know, it's a virus. Mm -hmm. So antibiotics are not going to be what you'd reach for. In this case, rest is really the number one thing that vets say horses need. And there's a rule of thumb for it. For every day that the horse has a fever, and the fever is an influenza because this virus can be very high, like 105, 106. Wow. Yeah, super high. Um, for every day that the horse has a fever, that's a week that the horse needs to rest. Okay. Because the respiratory tract, the tissue, the lining will be sloughed, and it takes 21 days to rebuild that. If you start back to work too soon with these horses, they can be set up for a lifetime of, of chronic airway disease. Wow. Yeah, so rest is really important. Uh, a well-ventilated, clean, dust-free environment, um, good food and water, although they may not feel like eating, that's one mm -hmm. of their the signs is being off feed, uh, lethargy or depressed, just, you can't, they kind of feel stiff and sore and achy like people do when they get the flu. Okay. Um, they have a dry, hacking, non-productive cough. Um, so vets will often give them non-steroidals like butanbanamine to make them feel better mm -hmm. and to reduce the fever. Um, but it's, it's trying to get them to eat and drink and, and that's part of helping them feel better is when you feel better then you'll take in some food. So quarantining is the same absolutely, principle? Absolutely, absolutely. While this is not a reportable disease, um, quarantine is when a healthy horse moves to a new facility and you quarantine for three weeks to make sure that they're not sick mm -hmm. before you introduce them to the rest of the horses on the property. Isolation is what you do when a horse becomes sick or breaks with disease. You separate them from the rest of the horses and you take care of them and you do the green, yellow, red tape mm -hmm. and identify, like you, you reserve equipment that is only used for them and you may need to throw it out when you're done or really clean and disinfect it well. I would probably just throw it out. I am such like a hypochondriac for yeah, myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's probably good practice. What I did like though that you mentioned for both the question one and question two was taking temperatures. Yes. And I think that's something that people probably should even do beforehand, just kind of what your horse normally runs mm -hmm. at because mm -hmm. some horses, I'm assuming like people, can mm -hmm. run a little warmer, colder. Yeah, I've told this story before, but when I got Newman, I said I need to get a baseline of his, of his vitals. Mm -hmm. and So I was taking his temperature and, and it was 101. I'm like, oh no, he's sick. And yeah. But I took it for two weeks and it was 101. And I'm like, mm. so he runs hot. Yeah. And now I don't panic or when I'm gone and someone takes it, and they're like, he's 101. It's, it's fine, that's what yes. it is. When he's 102, then there's something happening. So the, always make sure to have that baseline like you were saying. Yeah. I think that'll help you kind of work through these conditions and know where you guys are mm -hmm, at. Mm -hmm.